Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Simonis Aramith Arena and the 2019 International Nine Ball Open. Thank you very much. The Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel is once again our host venue, and also once again, Diamond Billiard Products is the official table of the International Nine Ball Open. We're in the second part of our evening session here on day number one. We've got championship action for you right now. We're not gonna wait any longer, so it's time for player introductions. We will have another match after this one, so please stay with us. Okay, our first player comes to us from Russia, appearing in his third event here in the USA. And he is a former three-time European junior champion. Let's kindly welcome Maxim Dudenets from Russia. Thank you. His opponent's from Germany. This gentleman is now the reigning and defending US Open nine ball champion. He's sponsored by Predator. He's also currently the number one ranked player in the world, sponsored by Predator. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joshua the Killer Filler. All right, gentlemen, please come and lag for the break if you would. Good luck to both of you, and it's now my pleasure to send it up to the commentary booth to Mark Wilson and to Double J, Jeremy Jones. Go ahead, guys. Coming to you from the Sheraton Waterside Hotel in Norfolk, Virginia, it's world-class nine ball. Dudenitz versus Filler. My name is Mark Wilson. Alongside me is the best analyst in the game, Jeremy Jones. Welcome aboard, Jeremy. And what should we look for in this match? Well, two guys that I'm sure have played each other in the Euro Tour events the last couple years. Uh, both, you know, Joshua Young, what was it? he may be 22 now. I, th I think that's what it is. Exactly right. Uh, Dudenitz, I believe, a little younger. Uh, but yeah, high-powered. Um, uh, of course, Filler, the, the favorite. Uh, but I think it's going to be uh, a pretty solid match. It's, it's all about due to that's how he gets started. If he gets started off well, I think he can win the match. Well, that's saying something because uh, Joshua Filler is a world champion. So you got to be a heck of a player to even get on the table and not lose too bad to this guy. He's, he's the other guy that has the same type of firepower that uh, Jason Shaw presents. Yeah, one of the uh, cream of the crop in our game, you might say. Filler always impressive and always getting better, it seems like, as well. And that's one thing I see. Even with taking some losses, I, I watched him in Russia. He took some losses. and I don't know. He just seems like he's maturing still and getting better. So somewhat like our James Aranis I watched uh, this afternoon. and. Just around the table, it looks like he's aged five years. Now he looks great, you know, mm -hmm. you know, strokes perfect, healthy, everything. But he just seems like uh, it just takes months for these guys to compete, uh, to, gr to grow so much. Yeah. So, Filler had to push out from the break. Dudenitz takes a look to see what he's got to work with. I'm a little surprised at that push out. This is very makeable and not a scratch in the side, I don't believe, Mark. So... Definitely not going to get this one back. All right. Now you overcut it. If it rubs past the side pocket, leaves a little more challenge. Yeah, and this is just the type of shot that, you know, you shoot this type of shot almost every rack playing nine ball. But once they get a little more difficult down the rail, this is where a guy like Josh or Jason really excel. Mm -hmm. It's not just the glamorous shots. It's the ones that you play every rack that can become difficult. And he's over it. it as well. Got some clutter there to help. Yeah, and these guys didn't have a lot of time on this table uh, with our last match going hill hill. So, I, you know, just like any other of the TV tables, it has a little more light on it. The ball's cut a little easier. Um, yeah, a little less friction involved, so. Dudenitz from Russia, and he trains with uh, Peter Korst and uh, Ruslan Chinnikov every day, so he's used to gunfighting at world-class level, for sure. Yeah, and he was just uh, on the Russian team that we played in the Dream Challenge over there for, I believe, his third year in a row, and that's saying something because they have a lot of strong players in Russia. Uh-huh. 
And I'm not sure if he was attacking there or not. Uh, just because of the speed he went at it. It's kind of hard to cut the ball thin so softly. <laughs> Feller. I always get a kick out of the way he kind of just pops up and just struts right to the next shot. Just so confident. He almost kind of takes off at first and then slows it down a little bit as he walks around the table. He's going to play a 5-9 combo in the side to get the first rack, it looks like. He's got to cut this a bit, though. It could be tricky. No, it was pretty head on. Okay. Well, he quickly grabs a 1-0 lead here. This is a race to 11. We're playing the three-point rule. The nine ball's racked on the spot. All ball fouls. Winner breaks. Yeah, and really the special thing, I don't know how they do it, or it's got to be the climbing a little bit, and, of course, the nice conditions that Diamond sets up here, but the tables always seem to play a little tougher here than any other big tournament that I've ever played in, uh, you know, on a consistent year-to-year -year mm -hmm. basis. And the break rule's tough, so really, I, I really like the format and the setup. I think if a guy runs four or five racks, he's probably had to do a lot, of, a lot to do so, you know? Yeah, good point. I think it's four and three-eighths inch pockets, too, which is a little bit snug compared to what a lot of the tournaments are, which is four and a half. Well, I, I was on table two this morning in my match, and I got here quite early to start practicing. And uh, one of the corners, I thought they put me on a trick table. I was like, what's going on here? Is a, you know, for brand mm -hmm. new felt. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that they were a little bit... Uh, a little more snug than even usual. Now, this is what I was wondering, because I watched Josh warm up on one of the outer tables, and it seems like he had a lot of inconsistent breaks. Well, this was a non-compliant break, and so despite the fact that he made the one ball, two other balls did not cross the head string. And I love the rule adjustment this year as far as the two balls down, and uh, you don't right. have to have one past the head string. I think, you know, without playing it before, and seeing it played, I, my gut says that's a good rule. Went after the nine. Well, and he kind of went at it at a light speed. And I, I know he's playing the cue ball up to the end rail, but, man, he, with that light of speed on a cut, the object ball didn't have much speed. So good chance of selling out this combination right back. Nine ball's just a little bit out of the pocket, a little bit high, so it takes a cut shot to make it. <laughs> no problem. I guess it wasn't quite as bad as it looked like from here on the overhead. Well, he hit it to that fat side you were talking about, though, so. Yep. Quick 2 nothing lead, and just as we talked about, that maybe Duda has needed that good start and quite the opposite. Well, we've got a lot of great matches going on. <laughs> Another thing that this tournament has grown into, day one, you see a lot of guys that could be playing each other in the finals. 100%. Uh, super quality field. There's uh, 96 players here. Mm -hmm. And I would say 93 of them can go deep. I, I don't think 93 of them can win, but uh, sure, it, there's 93 of them that can have a winning record in this tournament. Put yeah. it that way. So that's how dense it is. And you know how sports is, though. Once you get going, uh, you kind of believe a little more, even if you're a little down that list on trying to win the event. Like, you might... You know, yeah, the, the right. consensus might say you're not going to win this tournament, but you know how sports is. When you get going, you never know. Well, one ball rains into the side. The three Made ball two. follows it. Yeah, and he's going to get near the two ball to start. Oh, boy. Little trouble from the four to the five. The only reason being is because the seven is kind of close to the four, so he, he doesn't want to run into the seven. And the thing that tells me about that is if he can't get good on the four mark, he may get a little thin on the five as well, which could cause problems getting on the six. So we'll see. He that wants... being said, you sure bet that he runs out. Yeah, but he <laughs> wanted to get nice and heavy here so he could go up the good side of the table, meaning in between the six and the seven, I believe. I don't think he'll punch around here. Mm -hmm. I caught it. But he's still on the good side of it, the natural side. So now, now we get to see the Joshua Filler firepower, which is what I enjoy. <laughs> he reminds me so much of a Jason Shaw in terms of that. And you know how you're talking about his developing his maturity five years ago. Jason Shaw was this guy right here. 
and that's the part I think he's even gotten better at is the lighter strokes. Uh, you know, when he has to elevate, he's one of, the, one of the best you'll ever see as far as elevating the cue or having to really force the ball around mm -hmm. with, with a little angle. But really, he's gotten a lot sweeter, you might say, uh, playing the natural angles, yeah. you know, at a lighter pace. I'd play this eight up in the corner, I think. Uh, you could play for the side, but yeah. If you get close to the sides, okay, but that's a pretty sharp angle. No need to do that. Yeah. yeah. You, you got an easy two rail, just play it up in the corner pocket. That's what I was going to say. Rail. That's what okay. I was going to say also. If, it, if you felt like it's a hair thin, just float above. Now, due to Dets, who's had some success and some big moments as a junior and um, in the Euro Tour, but still probably hasn't had as much time in this, you know, kind of table setting, at least, as Josh has. All right. Nice little break and run out there. Expand his lead. Filler now has three due to that zero. And Filler quickly with a miss uh, on the two ball in the opening game. Uh, following a, a maximum miss on the two as well, he's cleaned it up quickly and kind of already appears probably not many mistakes coming from Josh. And the one thing that really tells you how much better Josh is getting is because he plays a lot of games well. Mm -hmm. He plays straight pool really well. Mm -hmm. He plays eight ball really well. And those yeah. are foundation games that make you think that, hey, it's a guy that's trying to get better all the time. Right. He's just not sitting there banging nine ball, you know, all the time. So he's trying to become a, you know, one of the best ever. Well, imagine winning the world championship in China. <laughs> you know how dense that field is. <laughs> yeah, the qualifier <laughs> oh, could be the world goodness. championship. And that's yeah. usually how that runs. There's going to be a ton of guys that you've never heard of that play as well as the ones that we have. Yeah, right. Well, it's just a numbers game with those guys, plus the way they train and, you know, yeah. being around so many great players, that helps so much. We know it around, you, you run across, you know, in DFW, right? Mm-hmm. Go to some pool rooms just there that I don't go to very often or just for some reason i got to give a lesson there or something. And you go in, you see a lot of talent, but you see, you can notice immediately they just haven't been around good players mm -hmm. to kind of develop that mm -hmm. talent, so... For those of you who are not aware, DFW refers to Dallas-Fort Worth. Right, right. It took me a moment. Okay, Josh in a really difficult push-out situation, which he rolled out and he challenged uh, due to debts in the, in the opening rack on a two-ball up in the corner. Oh, okay. I like the idea of trying to tangle something up. I think he left a 3-6 combination, however. Yeah, I think you put the two above the seven and run the cue ball a couple rails, maybe trying to put it behind the eight and nine. Is that possible? Something like that. Takes maybe. a good hit. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly doable from here. Yeah, run right in between the three and eight with the cue ball or use the seven somehow. Try and make some congestion of some sort. Well, couldn't have did it much better than that. Yeah, and that was... That was a sign that the nerves are in, in, in check, you know, like mm -hmm. that's the type of shot that if you're a little overamped or if you're a little overly nervous because of the situation, you tend to hit a little thick or maybe a little weak. Yeah. Uh, but, man, a perfect strike there and one that you should practice. <laughs> right. That's a, we That kinda, shot comes up a lot. It's not a naked safety, but nevertheless, you, that thin hit, it's easy to not hit it. hit it a little bit heavy and chunk it, and then you get way too much pace on the object ball. Look at this shot. Yeah, it's going to float too much. <laughs> and uh, Nice idea. Yeah, and it's a shot that comes up with so many variations, that chipping the ball and running it safe. So, okay, he'll look here maybe at playing safe. Uh, yeah, because he can, he can dislodge the three ball with this shot and then wedge that cue ball up against the seven if he doesn't like it. And be honest with you, I don't really see how he could be offensive and get so close to the 3-6. The two's up on the seven pretty good. So that's a real smart shot. Anytime you're playing that safety and you keep the two near another ball, mm -hmm. uh, it usually cuts off one way or another. And he's opened everything up so that uh, if he does get ball in hand, he'll be able to run the rack. Now, Josh needs to hit down on this with center ball. You don't want any top English on this, or else it'll probably go long on you. For it to hold its line, you got to hit downward on the ball. 
You want as flat a cue ball as possible. Yeah, yeah it's still a little bit long, huh? Hard to imagine that, you know, you go between the two and the three from there. If you get that angle, the angle of approach off of here, it just doesn't seem like you have enough. But he caught five rails and didn't touch a thing. <laughs> All the way back up to the other end of the table. Well, we've got Tommy Kennedy in a dogfight over there with uh, Ruslan, who just won the straight pool event down the road. 6-5 Tommy. And now Dudadets with his first real opportunity to get on the board. Good kid, too. Spent a lot of time around him in Russia couple years in a row. Oh, Maxime. Yeah. Uh -huh. A little light there on the stroke. So he's going to have to contend with the nine. And with the eight there as well, Mark, it's hard to just go right into the nine and know you're going to be OK. You may have to go forward off this ball or really try to draw it. If you just go straight into it, I'm, I'd be afraid of the eight a little bit. Or is he going to catch the top of the nine? OK, caught the top of it and made the nine. Great shot. Smoothly uh, executed. You know, the thing about Maxime, I, I first met him at the Atlantic Challenge Cup about four or five years ago. He sits in the crowd at the Derby watching Fedor play in the 10-ball, 10 10-foot 10 table tournament, which is nothing but elite players. You know that. Mm -hmm. And after their match, they're not, uh, and Fedor wins, but... They're up in the stands watching videos of pool on their phone while watching another. No, I mean, I just love oh, that. Yeah. You know, that, that's oh, yeah. how involved they are. They're not out high-fiving, looking to get beers or something. They're still talking about pool. And oh, it's yeah. like, uh, boy, I just feel like they somehow, maybe in a different life, they're my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, in Russia, they were there at a certain time every day, staying for a long time training. So very serious about what they're doing. Total respect, and I uh, just love that. I find that so engaging. Okay, so we'll get to see his first break. Okay, I don't see it all down, and it wasn't a compliant break, so... Josh will have the option here. And this is one he may give back. This is kind of difficult at first glance unless he can roll up on the eight. And that's not the <laughs> that's not the the most uh, friendly shot to look at. Mm -hmm. Just rolling right up on an eight ball that's out, out in space a little bit. The big thing to know is that on a non-compliant break, either player that plays cannot push out. Right. They have to play the shot or give it back. Well, Filler's going to play the rolling ball hit. Yeah, and that's what I would have been. And he butchered it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no yeah. there's no two ways to say it, but like you said, it's just so tough. Yeah, it's almost like you just almost have to guard to the other side of the eight, and if you let him see the one on the back rail, hey, you let him see the one. Yeah, but yeah. The thing is, whenever you're going behind that ball there like that, you always want that eight ball nearer the rail. Uh, that gives you a little more room for error, I guess, with the cue ball, you might say, but... It was difficult, but it was a hard one to pass, too, right? If yeah, the guy locks you right. up, you kind of feel dumb. Well, and the thing is, you know that he's comfortable to play it because he doesn't have a choice. You sure. do. So there's always that little ambiguity. Should I really be doing this? Oh, I don't know. Point, yeah. You know, it's just, it, it frees up the other guy because he knows he's got to go. So. And just coming two cushions right at the four. He kind of stunned it a little bit. So he's going to be a little further away, but still not a problem. Okay, this is one that uh, you use a little English. You could lose it to the right behind the seven. Okay, nice shot. And dude, that's, he's got all the tools for sure. Mm hmm. Anybody that pours in the hours like that and has uh, interest, you're going to get better, you know. And so he's been tough for five years, and then he's constantly playing with great players. Fedor, he spends all day on a 5 by 10 with tight pockets. So that says it all right there for me. Yeah. Well, he spends about half the day breaking and then the other half uh, playing. 
Amazing. Okay, looks pretty comfortable. A little flat here, but should be okay to move the ball to the rail and out. And when you look at this kind of shot, the best way to look at it is, hey, I'm not going to get straight on the eight. This shot becomes so much easier if you just take a little bit of a cut on the eight. Mm -hmm. uh, this seven, you don't overhit it. You get a nice position anyways. It's when you really try to jam it to get all the way over where you have misses. Oh, he went forward. So that's how little of an angle you had. Got to go past the eight, nine here, don't you? No. Okay. Sometimes hard to tell with the... He, from our angle, yeah. I, I refrain from calling them because I'm wrong <laughs> so so often. And they're, they're down there. They play the right shot 90% at least or better. So They definitely see that, that little bit that makes all the difference in our game. 2-3, due to Nets will be breaking but trailing. Both these guys play at a nice pace as well. You know, when they, they need time, they'll take it. But otherwise, they're, they're, you right. wouldn't call them rhythm players, but just a nice pace. No, well, Josh is fast, at least getting from one ball to the next. Yeah. We do have a round at 1030 as well. Earl Strickland's underway right right now. And from what I saw, both guys have played pretty darn well overall. Okay, so non-compliant in the last with a dry break. So it doesn't matter. Even if you don't make balls, you can have a non-compliant. He hit those with a little lighter speed, and I think that's the best results as far as making balls and, and complying with the break. Well, it looks like he's hooked. Yeah, he's... Difficult to roll down table without kicking, obviously, so he's not going to stay underneath the two. You wouldn't do that. You stay underneath the two where he's at now on that end of the table while you're asking to get put behind the five or maybe even a cross-side bank. So he's going to have to kick down table for the rollout, I think, Mark. I couldn't roll out down there. You're going to get stuck behind mm -hmm. the five all day at least, if yeah. not banked yeah. in. Yeah. So you have to roll out down table, like crossing the two over or something like that. Like I don't even mind rolling just up. If you could get past here to here and just kick and try to hit the two into the eight because you got the eight and the yeah, two. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be bad something. either. I hate to get, yeah, and he left him the bottom part I mean, of the ball this, too. That was, so that was a bit of. Uh, this was always going to happen yeah. from that push out. You know, it's just. Well, I, well, I, I don't even want to say inexperienced. Maybe just lost his, uh, lost it for a second, you know, because I think he would see that as well. I think, I think the other part of it, and, and you're right, he's, but he didn't grow up playing two shot rollout. Like you and I did. Well, so, I only played it once. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. yeah, I started a little late. I, All right. So it was well, 1988 anyway. when I, but I, I, I did like it when I played it though. Great hit there. Yeah, sure was. Nevertheless, a lot of young guys are not as familiar and do not make as many astute push outs. And I really, I personally don't think we should have a push out, despite the fact that I have an advantage playing it mm -hmm. because I played it a lot. Right. But uh, nevertheless, I, I just don't think it's a great rule to begin with. Can he cross this? Yes. That's a nice touch there. I think he may have left him a little window. It's close. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I think the push out is not a disadvantage for me usually. I mean, besides maybe some shot making here and there now. But um, I think it. It works to my favor a little bit, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. I still admit with you that I think we should probably go to no push out. Oh, well, good control bringing the cue ball backwards. And oh, I think it was a bad hit. I thought because it was the, too. Because the six ball went out. You can't, the six ball, if you hit the two first, the six ball will not go out from the rail. I think it was a bad hit as well. 
he got up underneath it, right? Right, yeah. right, because the six ball didn't go into the rail. If you hit the two first and the six ball goes down that way, it has to go to the side rail or at least drift towards that way. This way it went out, and so it's physically impossible to go that way if you hit the two first. Yeah, I agree. Because the cue ball came back off the six and then off the two and backwards. I thought he got up underneath it at first mm -hmm. glance, but yeah, mm -hmm. there was like a clickety click. Right. For the cue ball to come back, you had to change direction right, right. twice. Yeah. You know, that. Nevertheless, Ken Schumann likely get it right here when, with the replay. And Joshua was very calm, but he explained that he thought that was for sure a bad hit. Now, 4-9 combination looks very playable, but not so easy to get on that side of the mm -hmm. of the of the four off the three. Um, may still do so with ball in hand because he can really kind of thread the needle, get nice and heavy on the three with ball in hand. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, we're going to get a chance to take a look at the replay ourselves. We'll make our own determination. Yeah, they've looked at it already. You can see that Josh is going to get ball in hand here, but... We'll definitely, uh, here. yeah, watch He's, this. He gets up. Oh, well. No, we lost it. Here it right, is. Here we go. Yeah, he gets up underneath the six. Went right by the seven and the three. And that, you see yeah, the shaves six. the six, yeah. yeah. And the six is going out. If it, they play it a little further, you'll see it goes outward. Which, anyway. So here it's up to him, but I think I would, yeah, I would go over to try and get on this 4-9 after the 3 because the 6 to the seven's a little funny. If you get a little flat on that, it may be hard to get on the 8. And the 4-9 is laying so nice. Did he get dead straight here? That's going to be a little upsetting. He may be able to cheat it, though. If not, he'll stop it and play the 4 on the side and just continue the run out. But... Well, he had the slow roll. Now, okay, so he had ball in hand, and to, to miss this second ball, that you did something pretty wrong. But Dunitz will now have the opportunity to play the four, nine himself. I would definitely play that myself. I mean, you know, yep. we always talk about don't, you know, top players they don't play combinations, but don't go out of your way to to avoid one that's laying really nice. Especially when it's a game winner for sure yeah. if you make it. Yeah. Lined up pretty good. Man, after trailing, 3 nothing. Uh, quick Dude, rebound with three in a row. Well, gifted with that one. Because uh, I wouldn't have won the bet on him from giving up ball in hand. As far as young American players coming up, uh, who do you kind of favor right now, young guys? How do you feel? You mean, well, Skylar, of course, those types, Billy. Uh, uh, not top. quite that established. The, the ones oh, that, the oh, one oh. level below, I would say. Well, there's a lot of them, actually. Uh, Tate is a really good player. Uh, Joey Tate? Yeah, Joey Tate. Uh -huh. uh, Chris Robinson? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, Robinson for sure. Super solid, right? No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Chris uh, yesterday, and we visited for a little bit, and he's a hard worker, and mm -hmm. and he, uh, I like his chances of doing a lot of big things. The thing with him that I like, a compact stroke, a very smooth, you know, yeah. just a real flat with his cue, so he gets that little extra couple percent. Yeah, he's, uh, he just needs to, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes, but he just needs a, just a little more time playing all these big tournaments is all. That's the only thing I see. Good break there. The one found the side, the two in the corner. And I don't know if he's got an offensive shot on the three. He definitely can see it. And if he can see it, it's still not easy to get up on the four. If he can make it, though, he may be able to go right between the six, nine, straight up the table, trying to shoot that gap between the four and five. Mm -hmm. He's trying to go by the seven and eight. That's touchy. That's touchy with that side there. Yeah, that's why I was wondering. And the angle he's coming in on speed's got to be like absolutely perfect to not get right. snookered behind the five. A little unfortunate the scratch, of course. But. Yeah. 
talked about it before, Mark. Nothing like ball in hand to wake you up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, make yeah. a couple oh. mistakes like Josh. Uh, really boost your confidence. <laughs> you yeah. the table open, lay out, ball in hand. I was joking earlier about Jerry Bryce uh, that used to be what we'd be playing when it would be an open layout like this. He said, and you get ball in and you go, man, if you don't get out from here, you don't like girls. <laughs> 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 Just like, <laughs> then it bother you. <laughs> okay, and this is the first day of the tournament. So even though you'll see all professionals here and doing, putting plenty of time in on the tables, it still takes a, you know, a match or mm -hmm. so to really get comfortable. Uh, right. And the TV table gets so much less play than the outer tables because they don't let them practice on it at night, so. Right. All right, Filler about ready to reclaim his lead. Four games to three. Had a pretty interesting opening round match here to begin this morning at 10:30 a.m. was Bergman and John Schmidt, and uh, Justin you? missed some open balls. I did broadcast it. Oh, you did. Okay, that's and, what I was going to ask you. Were yeah. you in the booth for it? And uh, but really interesting. And then right at the end, uh, Schmidt was ahead 10-7, and he really didn't get hardly get a chance to play. Bergman got out of the rack. Then he broke and got a one-nine combo. I heard break, that. Yeah. And then he broke and ran out, so it's 10-10. And then in the last rack, and I can't recall if it, it came off of a safety play, but he got a mid-range, no, he got a mid-range open look, and stayed super still, spirited in, ran out. And oh, just, you're talking about Justin, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, I was playing and I, I left when it was 10-7. Uh, I just noticed the score. Okay, so shoring up that break pretty quick here, as far as Josh Filler's concerned. Really getting a lot of action on the balls, mm -hmm. making the one on the side. The nine was floating towards the corner pocket, and the nine counts on the break in this event. They use the outsfill rack, and you cannot inspect the rack. You have to accept it. Yeah, and I like everything about the rules. Um, okay, he's going to nip this in the side, it looks like. Just a little light cut. Speed's kind of crucial as far as the cue ball to the four. I don't think the four goes by the five, Mark. It's real close. Yeah, and it'd be awfully thin hit. I don't think he can cut it in the side either. Well, I think it's possible, but I'm very missable, and the cue ball is going to be dancing around the table <laughs> pretty good. So, Yeah, it'll be flying for sure. Yeah, it's not one that he could just throw with a lot of outside and slow the cue ball down and still have any control. You just got to turn it loose, I think. Not saying it's the wrong shot, but... Oh, wow, what a nice hit that was. Oh, he controlled the cue ball there, too. <laughs> okay. Man. Beautiful. So he's going to try and come two rails up underneath and bump the eight. This is where you be a little more aggressive with the stroke. That way you hold the line on the cue ball and you don't catch the eight. Don't baby it so much. Okay, he played it light. Well, he hit the fat side of the pocket over here. Okay. And that took a lot of the pace out of the cue ball because he drew back as if. I thought he would hit a hair more speed and go ahead and play that two rail, a little bump on the eight, like bump the eight like a foot away. All right. This is an interesting development. You can request the cue ball to be cleaned, but your shot clock does not stop. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so he's got an extension, so he can right. still use that right. as well and that's fine and that's the reason these guys were using it as an extra extension right right, right. you know so kind of interesting think of all things here at the international that's for sure <laughs> yeah. which is well, good that's what you're supposed to do another one of those shots i think he just kind of excels at you know you want a little more angle but you face with this shot a lot every other game every game and just consistently makes those uh Look yeah. easy. Yeah, he hit the heart of the pocket and the cue ball barely trickled back. That tells you how flat he was. Yeah, and that's a big part of being a better player is when you come back with draw or anything, know it's got to come back with a slow pace. That way you're in control of what's going on. So another break and run out for Filler. Now two games ahead. He has such a funny demeanor around the table. He's, he's happy uh, he, or he's... For, he could be emotional too when things are not going his way you can definitely look at him and tell well, he's a young, he, yeah he's a young man so 
I think there's he'll always have a bit of that, but mm-hmm. I think right now he probably has a bit more than right. what's going to be in the future. So conversely, you look at uh, Chang Jun Lin, and uh, oh my God, you don't know if he's got four aces or uh, <laughs> two four. seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, he carries four aces a lot. I'll tell yeah, you that. he does. Yeah, he definitely tends that way. Yeah, and uh, Asian. Doc Holiday, you might say. Yeah. Oh, he is a killer. Yeah. Speaking of killers, here's Josh Filler. Chang stepped up here and played a super match earlier, put on like about a 930. Well, I thought, you know, I thought Rob's been playing well, and here's that two going towards the side. And that's the break the guys are trying, a lot of them are trying to play. They're trying to cut the one. If they hit it with the right speed, the two comes three rails towards that side pocket. And they don't care if the cue ball gets lost a little bit low because the two's mm-hmm. near the center of the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, Rob, Rob, you know what? To his credit, he didn't get a chance to perform. Well, that's what I was going to yeah. say. I thought if he got a chance because he's been playing really well uh, and I like the way he's breaking the balls, or at least last time I saw him play this format, which I was on the wrong end of that, But by the way. But uh, I thought that uh, he had a good chance to win that match myself. Yeah, no, the bow constrictor got a hold of him, but he didn't get much of it. He slithered a couple times, and then he had three coils around him and smothered him. Well, here's one of those situations you need to take a little time to think because you're coming up towards that seven if you come naturally uh, without hitting the six of the eight. So this is very touchy. You need to dive with a lot of spin around the eight. Oh, yeah, this is a very funny shot. And you can tell he's uncertain about what he wants to do. And I like the fact that he's taking a bit of time. And I think for him, he's such a great shot maker. Get the cue ball clean, two rails, try to avoid the seven. Get Even if you got to shoot from some distance, the six yeah. goes to both pockets. So take advantage of your talent here. Don't do anything too silly on the four. Like, don't take a chance as a scratch. That's the main thing. <laughs> it looks like he's thinking about just going to the side of the eight, just go right at the eight. Yeah, that's pretty unpredictable still, though. I mean, you catch a little portion of it because... Well, he, I don't think he want, Yeah, I think he was trying to make sure he doesn't hit the bottom side of the eight off the end rail. I think that's what he was thinking about avoiding for sure. Banking. Oh, wow. Never mind. Okay. Good choice. Never mind. Pretty much bet the game on that bank, but it was an on-angle bank. That's what makes these guys great. They're willing to bet the games and matches. Uh, They feel like it's the right shot. They're going to go down with it. Well, that was a shot that you could win with, where the other shots Uh he just didn't feel like he could win with. This gets flat right here. Going into the eight, it could have been a problem. Looks like he may have to play that seven far corner pocket this time. Yeah, this way. Looks like that's the most natural, rather than trying to fight with the thing. I agree. Still a little funny, though. Sweet, sweet stroke there. Yeah. Just to make that happen, he had to artificially make those angles look like that. But when he hits it good, it looks like, oh, it just goes there. No, it doesn't just go there. It wants Mm. to go into the eight. Yeah, and they slowed the cue ball down as well. Got it going on that angle, but then slowed it down by gripping it with that center draw English. Uh, it's one thing, when, when you don't know about pool, you just don't know how much is going on with every single shot. Right. And that's why when you start playing and you get around and you start seeing it, you become fascinated and hooked. Uh, and that's why we lo- we appreciate it so much because we understand we've been in that spot. Right. Hit that a little thick to the hole, so a little bit short on the nine. And this one, he's got to pay attention. I think he can go with top English and hit before the side with no problem. But All right, smoothed it home. <laughs> a little grimace there. He was unhappy that it didn't go quite as smoothly as he'd hoped. And I think, like, like again, like most sports, uh, when you look at the top tier guys in each sport, they're most vul- vulnerable in the early match. Mm-hmm. Uh, without a mm-hmm. doubt, I was saying it about yeah. uh, Koping Yi in the last match before, you know, rise it started that, yeah. that, you know, Roberto's a great player. He, he's, you know, if he's behind anybody in the world, it's just percentage points and very few at that. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so, you know, I think it's a toss up in a race to 11 anyways, but I was commenting that you see, you know, Koping Yi 
every now and again, you know, he'll have struggle in an early match. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't, you don't, you won't see many struggles after that from him. Um, but occasionally, you'll see a few more mistakes in the early one. Okay, there's that two ball. See it? Yeah. And that's why, also, to be honest with you, uh, Mark, is besides the one and the nine, I think all racks playing rotation have to become random. Uh, just because if you set any ball. Yeah. If you keep placing it in a certain place, it doesn't matter if it's the two and three on the corners playing ten ball. It doesn't matter what it is. The guys are going to figure out where they're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But the two in the back, if you're going to put it anywhere, that's the best place still, though. Because it can get kissed and some things can happen. Last year, Skyler just had mastered or perfected the two ball on the side coming around for position. Yeah, well, that's, I think, where everyone got it from. He just run five or six or seven racks every match there. Big combination. I like his chances, though. Long way to the pocket, but it does look like he can tuck the cue ball there against the four ball. Yeah, he might rub the seven, but that still shouldn't open the cue ball. The three may rub the seven just a hair, but again, it still should be behind the four, I would think. Oh, he hit on that side. Beautiful shot. shot. Beautiful shot. So that's three consecutive games from the break here for Filler. Pushes his lead out seven to four. The score was three three at one point. Went three zero Filler, then three three. Filler won the fourth game or the seventh game, and then now from his break, three consecutive racks. Time do you play tomorrow? I play at 6.30 tomorrow night. Yeah, I get so excited. A lot of great pool here, you know. Couldn't be more thrilled. Well, I was just looking at the room. It's always one of the most comfortable places to play as well. Mm -hmm. Always can practice, you know. And that's one thing a lot of tournaments should recognize is you know when you're putting on a tournament you got a lot of things you got to think of but one of the biggest ones is to put your players in the best chance of playing their best yeah because that's when the show's its best you know and i don't yeah. want to call it a show it's a sport but the event is exactly. its best whenever everyone's playing at top form so wait well, that he got a nice kiss on the two there to actually slowed it up with the cue ball I know a lot of people neglect the details that make a tournament great, but Pat Fleming is a player and appreciates and understands exactly. Plus, say you come here from Chinese Taipei. I mean, is it fair to not have a place to practice at the sure, hotel? Yeah. I mean, come on, be reasonable okay. if you want people to come. He's got a choice here. I liked what he looked at initially, just topping. Let's go right between the nine and seven. He's going to come back, which is okay, too, and just lay on the side rail. To get there, nope. kind of decelerated a little bit more. Yeah, he. I think he should have gone to the other side and protected himself. Well, he could have went straight up the table and uh, mm -hmm. and just used you know used That's his talent. I mean. Yeah, use right. his talent a little bit, just coming using good speed. Even if you fall short, you can bank it cross corner. I mean, just you yeah. he, he's not protected here. The other way, he could protect himself. And he certainly has the firepower to make the other thing work. Now this one here, he's got to hit at a little lighter speed because he's got to curve it a little bit. Not a big underdog here to make the three. Yeah. So sacrificing the cue ball, but we might get to see something special behind, right behind it here. <laughs> yeah, this is what I paid for right here. This one I want to see. Well, he's feeling. Look at his smile. At these. He doesn't back <laughs> down much, and he's got a safety if he wants it. Not a hard one either, putting him behind the five, like banking the four up and letting the cue ball run a couple of rails behind the five. Oh, I don't want him to be all thinking and everything. I want no, him to go no. back to the... <laughs> oh, I do too. I was just saying that's just how impressive he is, even yeah. with the safety. Oh, oh. Lord. And watch out, cue ball. <laughs> okay, so left. Do it. Yeah, let's take another look at that kick. Yeah. He had twirled it around. Jeremy called it. Not a big underdog to make, he said. And just <laughs> just like Jeremy said, 
he yeah. executed it. He had to hit it at a light speed, though, to get around that ball, so he had to sacrifice position, but that's all you could do. So after a few racks run, well, that's good speed there, I believe. Oh, the jump on the 4-6 combination is very makeable. Not a big underdog here at all, again. Uh, just a little thin. So, after trailing by three early, now down by four, but with a nice opportunity to get on the board and get things going. Don't lay up on this too much, Ron. Go ahead and run the cue ball. That's that's why you don't lay up on it too, too much. Mm -hmm. I would have played it with outside. Now you don't have quite as much control because the five, even though it's easy near the pocket, it's got a few balls that are covering. So I thought he would run that with outside to the center of the table a little bit, but Jeremy's talking about two cushions rather than one. Yeah. And this is the type of shot that you could overrun easily because you want to make sure you get there. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just didn't want to get up against the long rail. Right. He didn't. Good pace there. Yeah, long, light stroke. She's not exceptionally tall. He's not a short man, but he's long, kind of, you know, for his, mm -hmm. for his height. That's his fourth win. He trails in the match seven games to four. Due to that, we'll be breaking. Tommy Kennedy hanging right in there with Ruslan. Down 8-7, but at the table. Tommy's kind of time on Sydney. Just keep, yeah. keeps getting at it. Yeah, he, he, he reminds you of like a uh, elf or something. I mean, <laughs> he's, just, he's just always there, got some little magical power. Yeah. He always, hey, it's uh -huh. Jeremy Jones. He don't miss a ball. Oh, yeah, he's funny. Yeah. Always a lot of very animated, a lot of energy. Hey, you hang in in this field of killers. You gotta be a good player. Yeah, well, Tommy is another place that I, you know, I don't get to see Tommy play a ton because um, I don't get out and play much. And he, he plays mainly around the southeast, besides a few big tournaments. And um, but he plays well here. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, even though he hadn't been playing the big, big tournaments all over like he used to, uh, he always has a couple big wins here. If not, runs somewhat deep. And, you know, years back when Buddy was in Florida, Tommy uh, gave as much as he got, if not more, against Buddy. Oh, know, yeah. so, I, mean, I lived there two years in Jacksonville and played that Florida Pro Tour, uh, four or five of them a year, and uh, Tommy was pretty darn tough. All right. Okay, difficult rollout situation here. I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, Josh wants to kick it in so bad. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he can do it with right. right he don't get position, English. but uh, English, uh, yeah. he just sometimes he just relies on firepower. Just go. I'm trying, I, but he's got to hit it with kind of a straight ball. A very difficult one to judge here with the six being there. Can't really hit it with the right, I don't think. I think he's got to try and tie up the eight and four, maybe. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then, uh, okay, he just rolled out to the jump. And that's interesting because he's a right-hander. No way he's passing this, but Josh knows he can't really hold shape. All right, but Maxim can send the cue ball at the two. 
Yeah, he's got to take his chances. Even if he, like, goes two rails and scratches by right. the eight, whatever, he's still right. got to take his chances of getting control of the table by pocketing this jump shot. And if he hangs around Fetter, I got to believe he hits him pretty well. Yeah. And pretty controlled, too. He didn't Very. overdo it. He didn't overamp it. And just like you said, he doesn't have a great shot on the two, but he has a chance to control the table. Well, he's got a bit of a two-way shot cross corner here if he wants to bring the cue ball down by the three uh, with the four six, if he can get across to the other side of the table. It's one you got to shoot at a little bit, meaning you can't totally lay the object ball up safe. You, mm -hmm. got, you know, you got to mm -hmm. kind of go at it a little bit, but he's going to go cross side. So a lot of traffic here with the cue ball. Big pocket, though. Oh, the short was the only way to really kind of miss it, I think. But he did real nice with the cue ball. We're going to get another look at the jump shot here momentarily. There it is. So now Josh is going to jump. This is a long jump to he's the ball a, just past the He's got to land on top of it, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Wow, what a hit. Did so pretty effortlessly. He's yeah. going to be rewarded. So three consecutive jump shots here. And now another one of those kind of bread and butters. Huh? Knocking in these long ones that require some force with the cue ball. He'll pop this one row in between the four eight or the eight nine. Just kind of depends on how much grip he gets. Oh, man. What a uh, shot that was. Yeah. What, what a, a shot. shot. Good Lord. Looking around the room, one thing, I, I mean, it was like that a bit of years ago, but not as much as as the guys help each other out. Uh, I, I look around at all the guys in the practice area over here, and they're all working on the break with each other, different things. Whereas you would know more than I would, Mark, but I know got players helped each other years ago, but mm. probably nothing like they do today, right? But, no, nobody helped each other. They, <laughs> nobody didn't have any nobody. money, so there was massive ego at stake there, you know. That's funny. Nobody, huh? But Fetter's over there racking for Billy. And, you that, know. that would never happen 25 years ago. Okay, a little light with the cue ball there, so he's got to make a little bit of a decision because the eight does not pass the nine, so he can't just freely run the cue ball. Okay. <laughs> he banged into the eight but got away with it. Josh Fetter now has eight. You know, talking about uh, helping each other, mm -hmm. okay, here's the story. The PGA Tour Golf Clubhouse guy came in and was complaining about taking an eight, a snowman on a hole. And he kept complaining and no one said anything. And then he complained again about, you know, his bad luck. And finally one guy said, look, 20% of the people in here don't care, and the other 80% wish it was been a nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, right, right. So, <laughs> That's kind of the way it was back then. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to say, but I, was, I knew which way you were leaning. Yeah, that's funny. But there certainly is more of a brotherhood today, and I think everybody, we're all struggling. We all want to see the sport go somewhere, and everybody, you know, nobody makes any money in pool to speak of, so you do it out of passion, and I think that's where that comes from. Well, I think the money's grown for sure, but uh, and I think it's going to continue to grow. To be honest with you, I could be fooled, but but also, I mean, it's the uh, communication day age, you know. So these people become a lot closer, a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, get to know each other a lot easier, a lot of different ways, and so. 
Here's that same shot he's had two or three times in this match. Rail first, uh, back cut the one ball in. Yeah, and this might be the easiest, and he can hit it nice and thick and spin two rails. He doesn't have to draw this. He's looking to draw to get on the three. He doesn't have to really do that. That's another reason why, is because if you get it going, but it's going to turn out nice. What a Man. shot. <laughs> Excellent. Work the cue ball close, and he's deathly accurate from this range. Yeah, I talk about it all the time, and, you know, these guys know how to play as well, but it's kind of the open table era, meaning mm -hmm. being so efficient with open tables, even though these guys know how to play whenever the balls are sitting funny as well. Uh, but one of the things you have to have is a very high efficient uh, percentage with open tables to have any chance in these tournaments. All right. You can, you know... There's going to be one match where you don't kick out of things, where next match you, you kicked out of everything. You know, things like that are just going to be here and there. But as far as the open runouts, yeah, you can't be playing safe on those or missing balls or stuff like that. Okay, should just come across. No reason not to. I was going to say, you don't have to catch the second rail either. A lot of people want to force the ball to the second rail sometimes on those angles. Well, Myself included. For the fifth time in the match, Filler gets out from the break. And so out of nine wins, Maxime has had no input in five of them. And with our break format... You know, even though it's winter break where someone can make up a lot of games quickly, but if you're putting together four, five, six from the break a match, uh, good chance you're advancing. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's got to put a superhuman match on you to stop you. Well, you know, just as well as the guys, they kick out of, you know, when you're breaking and you have to play safe or something, the guys kick so well, they, you know, they get mm -hmm. out of things so well that you're going to trade a lot of games in those situations. Yeah. And then those extra four or five you run really show up. I think it was just, what, one so-so break at the beginning, and the rest of them have been pretty on point. Putting that two near the side. And this is what I mean as far as now. This one's a little extreme. But you see, if the two gets in the center or is getting around the center of the table, there's not a lot of t horrible, horrible places for the cue ball. Right. I mean, this one ain't so great, but is he going to shoot right. this 2-8 combo? No way, right? No. I don't think he's... Well, there's the no reason to, anyway. No, the safety's a little touchy. Because you could lose the two ball easily and not get the snooker. So I think I play the two to the back rail here and, and try and get the snooker coming in between the four, nine, a couple rails or something. But if you try to get behind the five, you're going to lose the two, I think. Like if you try to come in between the six, nine with the cue ball, a couple rails, you're going to lose the, the two ball, I believe. I think the shot here is just chip the two on the left side, put it on the back rail. Oh, he went for the bank. Excuse me. What a shot. What a shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, bank combination, whichever. And that's the thing with uh, Joshua Filler is that he just gets out from places nobody else can. Oh, yeah. Know, nobody even thinks about trying it. Yeah, that's like the extra racks I was just talking about a, a match. If you make some of those one or two extra outs that the other guy's not getting out from, uh, it also seems to make such a huge difference in the match. Mm-hmm. So if he goes ahead and finishes this rack, that's another break and run out. Mm -hmm. It's from nothing, you know, like what you're saying. Is he going to play the 2-8 combo? No, no. Cross corner bang. Hit it super thin. Hit it perfect. And he just motors right on through these racks, too. He didn't take any time. That's the sixth break and run out of the match now.
puts himself on the hill. Mrs. Filler looks quite content. <laughs> I would love to have another look at that bank shot. He just didn't feel like pushing out had any advantage. So go ahead and be aggressive. Yeah, and I think he thought he might be able to overcut the bank to where it goes two rails to the back rail and the cue ball's coming down table if he misses. So. No, no question about that. That was factored in that there is a chance to get safe. The other part of it is on that particular shot, he was probably purposely trying to overcut it, and it just tells you how much hidden English gets put on the two oh, that yeah. opens it that much. Oh, yeah, so when you come across it. When yeah, you have that sure. shot right there, you know you got to play it. Because you know, he was even thinner. Right. Yeah. Yep. He right, hit it well, though. And tough. Beautiful. Backed it up with a bunch of others. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I mean, was, some guys would have made the bank because they recognize they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But then to have the firepower to escape after that, that's where we fall down. <laughs> yeah. And this is what I like. You know, this is one you're supposed to make, but it's still one of those medium testers that you have to keep making in this event and these types of events to advance. And uh, it's always a pleasure to watch. Yeah, well uh, said. I mean, these... These medium tough ones, and then you know you fall a little out of line on the two because you can't capture the cue ball exactly perfect on this one ball. Uh, so you have to make another one that's a little funny and mm -hmm. just kind of working through the rack. Even though you might say it's just kind of talent as well, not just work. Uh, he overcut it. He put it inside. That was interesting that he decided to put inside on that. Thought he might just kind of like uh, hit outside and play from underneath the two ball somewhere. Mm -hmm. He did have another option, too, because he could have banked the one ball, two cushions down here and just controlled the cue ball right. over here, but uh, just go straight away safety, which would be my firepower is such. I'm thinking straight away safety first, and then if I'm trapped, I'll try to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate to say, yeah, I think filler is about the opposite. <laughs> yeah. no, I see that. Yeah, you almost yeah. have to. There was no yeah. safety thought in his mind there. Yeah, you have to handcuff him to play safe. Yeah, he'd and rather miss. I mean, if we were partners and, and he said, well, I kind of like the shot. Well, I, I ain't saying another word. <laughs> no, no. That. Definitely want you to choose this one. Yeah. Just like this here, he may bank this long rail if he can get at it. It's real close. I don't know. I don't know if the three has him a little bit here. It's, it's real, real close. And I'll tell you, it's not the worst one to bank at if you felt good about a solid hit because the two could mm -hmm. get up the side rail a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just hit it, 20% of the time, it's going to leave random tough. I mean, just yeah. no matter what, you don't have to try to play safe. It's just going to get tough. And that's what I meant as far as a solid hit. Yeah. As long as you hit it solid, the two's going to get up, cue balls on the side rail, and, and, and due to that still has to come with a, a pretty Couple. good shot. Yeah, at Couple. least one. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as you're not going to let the two flutter towards the hole, it, it had to be something solid, and, and it was well done by Josh. It's an uncomfortable ball to play because you got to roll it in and you know it's real. It's going to be a real tough follow-up shot. Yeah, and this is one that, you know, I, I'm going to say I don't want to dead roll this. If I'm coming into the 9 or the 8, I don't want to do it too too lightly. I know I might scratch off the 9 or something, but sure hate to roll this in and get, like, elevated over the 9 or behind the 9 or the mm -hmm. 8. Oh, elevating is very tough. He's flirting with a side pocket here. And difficult to make. Oh, he hit it sweet. And even at that, it didn't turn out all that fair. He had to make an extra hard shot and mm -hmm. still didn't quite get what he needed. Well, he's, he knew if he dug on that ball, he was really flirting with the side pocket. So really actually a pretty excellent shot under the conditions your opponent's on the hill. And you know you're going to probably be faced with another tough shot on the three. So here he's got to just come two rails and float in between the nine and eight for the four. Oh, he's got to curve it? Oh, wow. I thought he had the three. Okay, so we're going to get to see another long, tough one from, hmm. from Josh, which is always kind of special. Yeah, this is definitely uh, fun to see the ease that he can execute these at times. 
Well, the, <laughs> look at that shot. <laughs> talk about a guy like a Jeffrey DeLuna, you know, and Filler. Those are two guys that can really elevate the stroke speed mm -hmm. and still stay very accurate, mm -hmm. you know. So that's a special thing uh, to get, you know, kind of redline the stroke a little bit and still be able to hit the cue ball. Better so mention sweet. Jason Shaw in there, well, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, there are some, but <laughs> Jason is, like, really good timing as well. Yeah. Um, he uses not quite as much speed as he does length, uh, in my opinion, where, uh, like, a DeLuna or a filler can really turn up the dial on the speed of, yeah. of the swing and still stay accurate. Well, this has been a fast-paced match, Jeremy. <laughs> I mean, well, Josh did a lot of the shooting, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and due to that, did not have the opportunity to play bad or good. He just didn't get many opportunities, so. All right, we got Rahan on the floor, so stay tuned. And on behalf of Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones, all of us here at AccuStats, thank you and so long for just a while. This is Rahan alive from the Smolensk Aramith Arena, and I'm standing here with undecidedly maybe the hottest guy on the planet in pool, Mr. Joshua Killer Filler. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great because I won my, my, my first match. I was struggling uh, at the beginning of the match, but then uh, I found the break, and uh, that helped me to be more comfortable. Hold on, did you say you were struggling? Yeah, at the beginning. I made obviously I made some mistakes, but. You know, for the first match, I think it was, I, I'm happy that it was good enough to win, so. Okay, so at 22 years old, you're the U.S. Open champ, this sad gen champ. Are you looking forward to taking this trophy home, too? Of course, that's why I'm here. <laughs> oh, he said, of course, that's why I'm here. I love your enthusiasm, man. What do you look forward to in the rest of your life? At 22, you won most everything. What are you looking forward to winning? Um, of course, uh, staying there where I, am, where I am right now, you know. It's uh, a lot of work I have to put in. I will do that. I, luckily, I have my wife who support me all the time. I'm, uh, yeah. He's a smart man. He always thanks his wife because she might beat him up. Raw hand alive from the Simonis Aramith meeting with Joshua Killer Filler. Get used to seeing this guy. We'll see you later. <laughs>